Hi, everyone. Uh, I think we probably gave everybody enough time to join. I'm sure they'll kind of trickle in as we go. Um, thanks so much for joining us. For today's call, um, we'll go over the V21, V3 migration, few things. One being the V21, V3 migration. Second being the BNT burn at 1 million BNT. The third being Almanac and their recent proposal up on Discourse. And then hopefully an update on the new AMM design and the filing of the patents. So um, I guess to start, you know, the ongoing discussion around the migration of liquidity from V21 to V3 continues on Discourse. Several options have been explored and results of several simulations have been posted, including the latest one, which is migrating the protocol owned liquidity from V21 to V3. Just to summarize for anybody who hasn't seen it up there on Discourse, and I suggest that you go there and kind of take a look at what these different options are. But the latest that was added there to the, to the discussion was um, kind of summarizing the total value of amount to migrate capped by protocol owned liquidity was $8.9 million um, equivalent to the associated protocol owned liquidity in BNT, which could be burned is $10.3 million worth. It was 21.9 million. And of course, these are all numbers at the time of this being added to governance. So this could vary slightly, you know, from the time it was posted to the time I'm saying this. Um, the of the 8.9 million in TKN to migrate, 3.7 million dollars worth of this is in link alone. So once migrated to V3, this will or is thought to approximately improve the V3 deficit by around 17%. So it's pretty significant. Again, if you haven't gone to discourse, you haven't seen the latest added to that discussion, please go add any comments, add any questions. UD has been great at replying to everybody and providing clarity when it's necessary. And hopefully with the options and simulations posted, we can come to hopefully some sort of conclusion on that soon. Um, next was the first DAO discussion call on Discord took place, not this past Wednesday, but the previous with the topic of discussion being burning VBNT versus BNT, and more specifically what to do with the V3 fees that have been accumulating. There were probably about 20 to 25 DAO members who attended the call, some who joined the stage to voice their opinions and together, you know, amongst themselves came to an agreement of a one-time trial to burn BNT once the 1 million milestone has surpassed. As a result of the discussion, an official proposal to burn that 1 million BNT is either going to snapshot today or has just gone to snapshot. And that'll conclude on Wednesday. Um, although the proposal has wiggle room for when the actual burn will take place, we're currently at about 925,000 BNT collected last time I checked yesterday. Um, so it shouldn't be long before we see that 1 million. If you're interested in listening to the DAO discussion call before casting your vote and you haven't yet, it's up on the Bancor YouTube, along with the latest DAO discussion call we had with Michael, um, the founder and CEO of Almanac just this past week. Mark, if you are here, and I think that you are, would you mind joining me up here? I wanna speak a little bit about the Almanac proposal that we have up on Discourse. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, perfect. Um, so Almanac posted to Discourse last Tuesday, I believe, um, a proposal to optimize the protocol through simulations in order to help reduce the deficit and generate more revenue by providing fee and liquidity recommendations on four pools. It was WBTC, ETH, LINK, and DAI. And I just kind of want to, actually, you know what? Um, I might be putting them on the spot here, but I see a few people from Almanac are listening to the call. Maybe rather than jump right into it, Mark, we can, if you guys are willing and able and you wanna jump on the call, um, request to speak. 
and I'll go ahead and approve you as a speaker. And maybe you might want to take the opportunity to speak to the DAO and the community members yourselves. I'm going to give that just a minute, Mark. Give me a moment. Okay, I see Stefan, Lucas, Michael. Are you guys, are you up here now with me? Yes, I think so. I am. Can you hear me right? Yes. Okay. So how can we approve? I see Michael and Stefan both have their hands up also. Stefan has joined us. Michael, okay. I think you're up here as well. I'm here as well. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I didn't mean to put you guys on the spot. And Mark, sorry, I called you up here thinking maybe we could kind of break this proposal down a bit more. But um, seeing that we have them joining us, let's go ahead and let them do it. Um, if you have anything to add throughout the conversation, though, or any questions of your own, like obviously feel free to chime in. Um, thank you guys for jumping up here. Maybe you wouldn't mind just introducing yourselves, telling us a little bit about your background and your role at Almanac to start. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is indeed quite uh, surprising. Well, first of all, welcome everyone. We are honored um, to be here. I think it would be right for, for Michael, our CEO, to start. Uh, but thanks yes. for, for let, letting, us, letting us do it. Can, can you hear me? I think yes. so, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 perfect. So yeah, uh, thank you for having us. Uh, it was absolute pleasure to, to discuss this with Dao on the last call. Uh, yeah, we are more than happy to explain it. Uh, I love, you know, community calls. It's, it's always very, uh, very cool to um, to cross check with the, the community members uh, if everything is written in a digestible way, if they have some questions, if we can clarify things. So yeah, like more than happy to, to take, take take the stage here. And yeah, maybe a, a short introduction. So I believe on the call is me, Lucas and Stefan. So about myself, I'm in the crypto space for seven years. I've been specializing in token economy before it was even named token economy. I've been advising many, many different projects. I think the first one that is, that I've been the most successful was Elrond. Uh, later, Bancor, Credo, many different projects. I also was a, a DAO member for a while. Uh, in, in DAO, I was participating like for uh, like, a, like a year ago or two years ago. I was participating in, in Bancor's DAO. Uh, I was helping Mark with uh, the design and R&D of on V3 and Bancor V2.1. So I'm also very familiar with, with Bancor product itself. Uh, apart from that, I have the green applied mathematics in economics, so that's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah, I realized that uh, DAOs very need help of um, of solutions that are able to process and predict how things are going to look like, uh, and therefore we have set up Almanac. Uh, we are not the only in the space. Uh, the market is already like proven the need has proven the need for for such a services. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Gauntlet, for example, which provides such a service for Aave, Compound, Synthetics. Uh, basically, they run also agent-based modelings to, to make the protocols work better, earn more money and be less risky. And you want to do exactly the same for Bancor. Uh, and yeah, that's, a, that's about me. Uh, there's also Lucas with us and Stefan. Uh, maybe they can also say a few words about, about themselves. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's... Stefan, I think uh, since you're 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 I think the largest contributor to the to the proposal itself, maybe we can finish with you and and then transition into the proposal from there. And I'm gonna just go just now. So, thank you everyone for having us. My name is Lucas. I'm the COO of Almanac. Um, a pleasure to be here. Um, an absolute. An absolute pleasure to work with Banker here in our uh, around our launch because we are uh, a new entity. Maybe before I, I introduce myself further, um, say a couple of words about Almanac itself. Almanac uh, is indeed uh, a young company that's um, intending to be uh, an entity that works with DAOs and assists them with risk management, uh, revenue optimizations, and uh, sandboxing innovation. 
we've created a, a test environment where we can simulate uh, a large amount of uh, decentralized scenarios pulling data data from uh, all sources we deem relevant. Uh, and this is exactly what we want to do. We want to work with DAOs closely, provide them with very specific intelligence that allows them to make the right decision, uh, have visibility into risk, and ultimately offload uh, core contributors called core builders from, uh, from these tasks, uh, also um, helping the decentralization effort. Uh, when it comes to myself, uh, I, I am a securities uh, lawyer by education. I used to work in uh, private equity companies. Uh, overseeing uh, at some point transitioned into tech, oversaw tech companies, and then from there I transitioned into uh, product management and growth into tech. Uh, worked at Uber uh, for quite a while, and then into in a number of startups. Was a member of uh, Founders Institute for a while when I was uh, mentoring and lecturing. And uh, right before the DeFi uh, summer started, so around two years ago, I've joined uh, crypto full time, uh, investing and building uh, my own uh, projects in the meantime. And Almanac is actually an opportunity that was, uh, maybe th this is a place for a little story. Uh, Michael here, uh, he's been in crypto for a, longer, for a longer period of time. Uh, and he's been recognizing the need to uh, use data intelligence to lead crypto decisions. Uh, actually, quite some time ago, almost three years ago now, uh, he was talking about a need for a very, very robust uh, simulation platform that will be capable of simulating those things uh, in a precise manner. So. Here we are, uh, two years later, uh, and uh, we're super happy to work with Banker. Thank you for having us. This is indeed uh, quite a spontaneous thing, but very happy to be here. And transitioning to the one and only Stefan, also from Almanac. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, so yeah, very happy to be here. Uh, so Stefan Thomas, I'm the CPO at Almanac. Uh, so I joined Almanac three months ago, and uh, I was joining. I, I used to work in TriFi for about uh, seventeen years now. Um, Michael, can you mute yourself, please? Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, so yeah, I worked uh, primarily as a researcher, um, and I, I founded my company. For about 10 years, I was doing uh, research and development for uh, software providers, uh, big names in, in TradFi, uh, like uh, KMV, Moody's, uh, Numerix, SunGuard Analytics. Uh, so we were specialized in um, high dimension calculations and risk management. Um, we worked with algo trading firms, um, derivatives desks, um, and, and risk management teams uh, for uh, yeah, capital markets, uh, big players, banks, investment banks. I uh, did that for 10 years and then I turned to consulting, uh, which led me to work with uh, strat firms like McKinsey and Big Four, I ended up as a partner at EY. Uh, at the time I was uh, doing a lot of uh, model validation uh, for quantitative finance um, and then progressively turn to uh, AI and machine learning validation. So how do you validate AI and machine learning? Uh, meaning how do you make sure that the model is doing what it's supposed to be doing? Uh, so we built a technology platform that was uh, AI and machine learning operationalization uh, to help accelerate the whole end-to-end -end life cycle of those models. And uh, about a year ago, I decided after having invested for years uh, for years in, in Bitcoin and crypto in general, I decided to quit uh, the TradFi world and to join the, the Digen world, uh, which I did by, you know, uh, making myself available as a contributor on Discord and different projects. Uh, so I worked with different DAOs um, on NFT, on Talking lounge, um, and then uh, yeah, three months ago I met um, uh, with Michael and Lucas, and uh, we sort of joined and converged to that idea of you know the, the data would be the next step of evolution uh, for the blockchain and um, um, merging uh, AI and machine learning with uh, on-chain data um, was something that you know appeared natural uh, to us, so. Here I am. So what I'm doing at um, 
Almanac is essentially leading the product team and the data science team, uh, which means that uh, there's a part of that work which is more like uh, Mark's work uh, within Bancor, so more like research and development, trying to make the product better, um, research you know, around avenues, uh, either hardware, software, uh, methodological uh, improvements, and then the other part is uh, really making the product uh, run as it's supposed to be running and adapting, customizing the product for, for our clients. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Um, and i um, super happy to be here again and uh, looking forward to um, connecting more with you and with the community. Thank you, Jen. Back to you. Thank you guys so much. Um, okay, so you kind of, you gave us this intro to Almanac as well. Um, I guess I'm curious then, I wanna ask you about the protocol economy assessment report because that essentially was done obviously before the actual proposal was made. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that report. Yeah, so uh, yeah, let me take it over here. So basically um, we wanted to find the best way how to you know, collaborate with Bank or DAO, how to build credibility. And because we, you know, we are new on the market, um, we figured out that creating such a report and spending time on it and, and resources is the best way. Yeah, so basically we are very transparent with what we are doing. We described everything very well. Uh, my knowledge of Bank or V3, of course, helped a lot as well with understanding the problem and doing that. Uh, guys' knowledge with uh, like machine learning and AI and general blockchain space uh, allowed us to uh, to create first the technology, uh, run it, and later create the report. Yeah. So uh, basically, the main idea behind the report is to show why what we are doing makes sense, how we are doing it, uh, what type of resources we are using, and yeah, what what is the output expected output of this. Of this technology. Uh, what is worth to mention, there's only three of us, but behind the report is 12 people. Uh, there is a architecture department, there is data uh, engineering department, there's data science department, and there's product department, yeah. So uh, I highly encourage, of course, it's like it's almost 40 pages of uh, tough read, but if someone is, uh, is geeky as we are, uh, highly encouraged to go over it. Uh, if not, uh, I'm more than happy to to explain it in more digestible form uh, on the call. But yeah, idea behind the report is basically to to show uh, what we can do, how we can do, and what is the expected uh, outcome of it. Uh, Michael, maybe I can I can give an overview of um, of our approach and you know methodology uh, very yeah, quickly. Sure. Um, so we're using um, something I've been using a lot uh, since my PhD, actually, which is the global sensitivity analysis. So everything we do is is pertaining to that field of trying to understand uh, the relationships between input and output. Um, in between, you have a, a system which is more or less complex. Uh, so there's many ways to do that. Uh, one of the most um, let's say convenient way and an agile and adaptable way is to do it through simulation. So basically uh, you have a, a space of input. So maybe, you know, data, transactions, uh, prices, and you have an expected output. So you try to predict something, you try to predict a, a price or you're trying to predict what's gonna be the next action from a trader. Is it gonna be, you know, selling or buying? Um, and in between, you have that system, um, which is which we call um, an environment. And that environment is composed of uh, essentially two um, two chunks, two blocks. Uh, on one end, you, are, you have uh, all the macro and um, uh, let's say uh, transactions, uh, prices, uh, the AMM structure, and the blockchain itself. So we replicate um, a, a, we, a copy of that, you know, um, of those primitives, of those components into a virtualized environment. And we add on this, which is the second block, uh, the agents. And so those agents are 
depending on the topic at stake, you can you can you know look at uh, for Bancor essentially three types of agents. Uh, so we have uh, traders, uh, which are you know like um, normal users trying to interact with the with the with the protocol just to swap their their token. Then you have arbitrageurs that you know have obviously a specific role in maintaining the balance of the pool um, with the open market price, and you have uh, liquidity providers. So we calibrate and train those agents uh, that you know uh, behave uh, following a you can call it like a, a utility function or a behavior function. Uh, and so we train uh, those functions on past transactions and data that we take uh, from, uh, of course, bank or pool, but also outside of that, we look at, you know, um, volatility and other uh, market data um, outside. So looking at, for example, Binance um, to sort of, you know, grasp uh, the, the as much information as we can. Once these agents are trained, we um, uh, merge them in a way, we make them interact with the environment. And so that's where we have uh, the basis, the foundation for our simulation. So then we just have to project uh, scenarios of the future. So meaning essentially volatility scenarios of prices. And then we confront those prices to the agents and they interact with, uh, with the prices. And doing so, they create new transactions. So we create new states of the of the blockchain and the pool, and then once we have sufficient uh, observations of those new states, uh, that's where we start analyzing. And so we have the whole space, and we say, okay, uh, looking at this whole space, what are the main factors uh, that are you know driving the output that we are interested in? So, for example, fees is one, trading liquidity is the other, two effectively optimize the objective function, which is uh, the profitability. So what are the factors that are driving um, in the best way as possible as we want, uh, the revenue and the deficit? Once we have those factors ready, then we can start optimizing for them and saying what are the values of those parameters that we call protocol levers, uh, what are the values of those parameters that are, you know, um, uh, providing the objective that we that we want? So making the revenue maximized and the deficit minimized. So yeah, that's just to give you a glimpse um, of of how we proceed, and we do that by using um, machine learning, um, um, evolutionary algorithms, um, and uh, classification methodologies, regressions. Um, we're using also um, functions that represent uh, profits and fees that are used by the industry. Like you can think of an arbitrage profit, uh, which is you know uh, widely used in the industry, which is essentially the difference between the delta of the price and the fees that the arbitrator will have to pay. So those things are. Uh, consensus um, in the industry in a way. So we, we use that um, and we also uh, bring our um, in-house proprietary um, innovations and algorithms. Um, and we deploy those um, on, a, on a scalable uh, technology platform. So we can do parallel compute, uh, we can you know, scale horizontally, um, uh, depending on the workload, depending on the amount of simulations we want. Um, if we want a super high accuracy, then we'll have to augment the number of simulations. If, we, if we're looking at super extreme events uh, in our analysis, then we'll have also to augment that number of simulation. And that's where the technology, the auto scalable technology um, comes uh, super handy. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll pause here. If there's any question, we'll be happy uh, to answer them. Yeah, I see that Glenn is like summarizing in a chat what we do. I think uh, the easiest one-liner is uh, that Almanac is using agent-based modeling 
in order to predict the optimal setups of the protocol in order to generate the highest revenue and have the lowest deficit or to decrease the deficit. We call ourselves like a, a premium governance partner that basically offloads the team so the team can focus on whatever uh, innovation and making protocol better where we do our best with optimizations. One of the things I was hoping um, that you could talk to is um, how, uh, what is Almanac's business model? Like how, how does it collaborate with DAOs in an ideal context? And then we can talk about uh, the relationship with Bancor and, and everything else um, after that, just to bring some clarity to the situation. But I think like future facing, can you explain um, precisely how, um, you know, Almanac plans to, to generate revenue for itself? Yes, of course, with pleasure. So like I said, um, at the beginning, uh, we proposed a three month tri trial period. And over this trial period, we want to measure what would be our impact on Bancor. We of course have some expectations in the, bar in the, in the report. Uh, we, we simulated that we are able to generate 20% more profit, which means revenues or, or over the cost of the impermanent loss. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, for us, it was uh, what we wanted to see. 20%, it means, okay, it's worth uh, to engage with, with, with Bancor. And now we want to test it over the next three months. Uh, we hope we will meet this, this, this benchmark. Of course, if it's 10%, we're also going to be super happy. Uh, and yeah, if, if, even if it's five, it's also, you know, in a scale, let's say, if the, if, if the, if the volume is going to come back to Bancor, uh, even this 10 percent, this five percent, maybe maybe millions, uh, and yeah, uh, we hope. Of course, we're gonna meet 20. If um, later, after the three months, we will present the report of how we performed, uh, how much we have increased the revenue and decreased the deficit, and based on that, we will ask Dao, okay, Dao, uh, would you be willing to pay for our services? In the future, yeah. So for the after three months period, we will negotiate directly with DAO. How much of those, let's say, uh, increased profit they would be willing to stream towards us? Yeah. Let's say if we increase twenty percent, maybe we can get four from it. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, we are fully open for for uh, how it's going to look like. Uh, we of course have some some ideas, but this is going to be a discussion with DAO. If thou, if thou is f feeling that uh, our services are valuable and is willing to pay for us, yeah? And this model is uh, used by everyone in the industry. Gandhi is doing the same for other, um, yeah, Chaos Labs is working with DYDX and MakerDAO. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is how it, how it works. Okay, and so just to bring some subtext to this, um, when, uh, so uh, Almanac is is like this is not a um, like a bank or initiative that they're here off their uh, out of their own volition and speaking directly to DAO participants, right? Um, and then the, That's correct. the tricky, yeah the tricky part here is that um, the DAO doesn't yet have any you know finances with which that it can um, you know budget for these kinds of operations, and so. Um, the uh, the Banco Foundation essentially said that you know we're happy to cover the costs of uh, simulations. So at the moment, um, Almanac isn't receiving anything in revenue at all, um, but the the cost of simulation um, is um, is being covered, which I think is about five thousand US dollars a month. Um, and this That's is right. you know up in, up until the end of the trial period. And so the, uh, you know, it, this is obviously something that the the DAO needs to get organized. Um, but we need, you know, in order for a continuing collaboration between Almanac and and Banco DAO, we'll need to set up something like a Guernsey Trust or something, so that uh, the DAO has powers to pay for um, services such as this. And I see this as something that is, you know, an emerging concept in the industry anyway. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's better that we're tackling it sooner rather than later. 
um, but I just want to make sure that uh, everyone understands what you know, um, you know what this relationship is. This is something that is exclusively between Almanac and and the DAO. And uh, you know, I'm not a part of this process. Yudi isn't a part of this process. This is completely, you know, third party, completely independent. And so it's a big, you know, it's a, an important decision. And I think the conversations surrounding this kind of, uh, you know, business relationship, uh, you know, B to DAO. Um, is something that should be taken very seriously, um, including um, you know how uh, like performance metrics are are um, are, are audited and, and that kind of thing. So this is really um, you know a big step towards decentralization. And um, you know Tyler can speak to uh, some of the other things that um, are being done with regards to setting up something like a DAO treasury so that it has the the resources to um, you know to to do this stuff on its own um but this is yeah this is um you know uh, the the first step in that direction towards like a a fully decentralized realization of of the dao powers yeah thank you for for like uh summing it up mark i couldn't uh, agree more uh, we believe that uh in order for protocols to stay innovative and to move forward, they're gonna need support with uh, like professional centralized support or like premium DAO support, basically to, to analyze, to stress test. Uh, we are also working on, on sandboxing platforms, so we'll be able to also service and offer a testing environment of new solutions. Uh, so for example, uh, I, I've heard that you guys are working on something innovative, uh, we would be able to test it before it being deployed uh, in the near future uh, to actually see the impact and stuff like that. And we, we believe like uh, more and more complex protocols are going to appear and they're going to need uh, management that is reactive. Uh, and in order to do that, DAOs unfortunately are too slow to react. Usually there is a voting mechanism that takes time and uh, this voting takes seven days. Uh, you know, th th there is a there is a need for for such services as as Almanac, where there is like one voting, and we are getting access to, you know, changing those 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 fees and trading liquidity uh, reactively, so the protocol can generate more revenues. I think on that um, on that note. <laughs> Um, can you describe, um, you know, in the context of the proposal, um, you know, how the uh, how these recommendations are going to be delivered and acted on, and, and that kind of thing? If the if your if your proposal is successful, so <clears throat> yes, so the recommendations are going to be provided in form of a, a bot, Telegram chatbot. So basically, uh, we 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 run our simulation every three days or every week, depends on how uh, volatile is the market. Sometimes we are going to run it even more often if the market is highly volatile, so we can get the fresh data. The simulation is being fed with, with fresh data. The data are being pulled from, from blockchain. Agents are being fed with those data. Um, agents, are, uh, agents react on, on the environment. And environment pro uh, and agents and environment produces uh, the recommendations what we should do in order to get the highest revenue and the lowest deficit in this particular time of or the, the situation of the market. We take the volatility and we take the, the share of the arbitrators um, in, a, in, in trading volume. And based on that, we provide DAO optimal trading liquidity for each pool and optimal trading fees for each pool. Yeah? What is very essential is to react as fast as possible. So when we provide this recommendation, those parameters are being changed fast. Why? Because the faster they are being changed, the more efficient it is, the more money we are making. Yes. So this is also like why such a solutions cannot wait for like seven days voting. Yeah? Let's say the volatility has changed an hour ago. We will react to it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there will be no changes, let's say, for days because the market is flat. Sometimes the change is going to be more often. But yeah, it's going to be a, a Telegram bot that is going to send the message publicly to everyone and bank or core, core team will update the message. We will we'll apply the message and, and update the smart contract. 
so I think for for people that are uh, have been around for a while, um, things uh, like this have been done kind of before, but where yes. there was a, f a fixed schedule of um, of feed changes, for example, where the uh, you know the DAO would vote once and have over the period of a few weeks the 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 trading fee on a particular pool move uh, up and down. Um, so that they didn't have to vote on each specific change. So in a way, um, this proposal, it, it feels at least um, related to that kind of schedule, except instead of um, being predefined, the uh, the next update is going to be a result of whatever the simulation produces for that week. That's correct. What I also would like to add is that it has been done and proven working for Balancer. Gunset has engaged with Balancer on trading fees, and they've been optimizing trading fees. The, the only difference they did, they have set up a smart contract that gave uh, Gunset access to the to, 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 to the change of the to the opportunity to change the fees. So Gunset was changing the fees directly. Yeah, what we are doing there is like another like the the, the filter of communication is going to be changed by by bank or call developers instead of by us directly. We will just send the recommendation and um, we hope that it's going to be changed fast enough to get the highest revenue. Yeah, and for clarity, the um, the Dow MSIG won't have a say in this. Um, if the proposal passes, whatever that uh, recommendation is from Almanac will be treated as the Dow's will. And so that's what will be acted on. Um, so that's the the organization of the of the proposal. And if anybody has any you know questions, I don't know if everyone on here is aware or was previously aware of the proposal. Um, but now that you've heard a little bit from Almanac themselves and about what the proposal actually is, definitely suggest going to discourse, reading through it. Um, there are some questions that were previously asked by some DAO members on the discussion last week. That video is available up on YouTube. The guys here, Michael and Stefan, have been really great about replying to any comments and answering any questions that are up there. So please be sure to visit discourse and read through that if you haven't already. Do you guys have anything else that you want to add? I know it was kind of spur of the moment. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to kind of speak to Mark also about maybe trying to get a little out about the um, patent, but if you have anything that you want to add to that, please do. And thank you so much for, for joining us and for going through all of that with us. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jen. Nothing to add on my end. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. What's the, uh, what's the best way for DAO participants to engage with you guys, by the way? Do you prefer that they speak to you uh, on Discord or is there a dedicated Telegram channel or something? Uh, my when DMs are open. Uh, there's, I think the best way to, to interact with us is to just simply reply to the uh, proposal on, on Bancor DAO. Uh, because, yeah, it's like, it's, I think it's the best. However, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm up for the next few hours and I'm going to be up in eight hours again. And I'm more than happy to answer all the questions on Telegram. I think Telegram may be better uh, than this course, but I'm trying to check all the, um, both Telegram and this course at least like a few times a day. So whatever works for you guys best, just, 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 uh, yeah, just ask questions, please. Awesome. Thank you guys so much again for uh, for joining us. I really appreciate you giving us all the info in the background of, you know, for yourselves and for Almanac as well, and kind of what your expectations or hopes would be if the Bancor DAO were to approve the proposal. Mark, you're still with me, right? I'm still here. Okay. Um, so I want to ask you about the filing of the patent or patents. I know you said on the last community call you were hoping to have them filed by the end of the month. Does that look to still be a realistic estimate? Maybe you can give us an update on the status. 
yeah, I still think that estimate is um, pretty good. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, start revealing and talking about some of the details of um, what's being worked on um, in, our, in you know the, the first week of October or something like that. I'm optimistic for that timeline still. Great. Now, I might be pushing my luck here, um, but I'm going to try anyway. I know that until the patent's filed, you can't really give any sort of info on the new design, but is there anything new you might be able to tell us in regards to that or still just kind of, I mean, we have another week, week and a half maybe or so until, oh God, not even, um, a few days maybe, until we can find out more, so. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to risk um, shooting myself in the foot with regards to public disclosure. So, I think that better just to wait. Um, <clears throat> wait until uh, you know, like you said, it's there's only a few days left in September. So, if I um, manage to get everything on paper and in the the hands of the patent attorney, then um, I think yeah, better to to start discussing everything all at once rather than you know provide unhelpful you know teasers or something. Let's just have a, a more focused and um, thorough discussion um, in the sometime in the first week of October. Yeah, completely understandable. Um, okay, so then just to kind of give a quick summary up on snapshot today, we have the proposal to do a trial burn of this 1 million BNT um, from the fees collected. Then we have Almanac's proposal, which we just heard a little bit more about. That's under review. And please go ahead to discourse and kind of read through both of those. Um, in addition to the proposal of the discussion happening around the migrating of liquidity from V2.1 to V3, especially that last part there for migrating the protocol owned liquidity. Um, there's a summary at the end of all of the simulations that were posted that'll kind of give you the TLDR, but still great to kind of read through it all and, and get a better understanding of what it's actually stating. And I think with that, we can go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you everyone for joining us on the community call, Mark and Stefan and Michael and Lucas. I appreciate you guys coming up here kind of last minute and joining us as well. Um, anything go ahead and comment in the telegram and on discourse and i hope everyone has a great day yeah thank you very much i'm more than happy to answer some questions maybe if someone has some uh i recognize some names that were asking questions in the chat before so uh maybe it's a good time you know what if you don't mind michael i think the best way to do it would be to, because others have the same questions as well, maybe we'll go ahead and keep it to the actual proposal so everyone has the opportunity to actually add their comments and kind of build off of each other's questions and then it's there to reference back to. We'll keep it to the um, to the proposal and to Telegram. Of course, of course, yeah, whatever, whatever works best. Awesome. Thank you guys again so much for joining us and I hope everybody has a great week. Thank you, you too. Have a good Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.